cyber espionage. It's espionage. It's stealing information. Uh, it's the second oldest profession. And if you think about traditional espionage, uh, and imagine yourself the KGB resident in, in Washington, and your job is to get somebody in the CIA and get somebody in the FBI. Well, that's a risky business. You know, if I recruit you as the FBI agent uh, who's going to work for the KGB, maybe you arrest me. Maybe you turn me in. So talent spotting is very difficult. Uh, and then when you get that agent, uh, Robert Hansen in the FBI, Alder James in the CIA, they smuggled out small amounts of documents from the headquarters. And they hid these documents in a public park, and then the Russians would come along and pick them up. Old-fashioned espionage. Very risky, very labor-intensive, small amount of documents get stolen. Cyber espionage, very limited risk. You sit back in Moscow or Beijing or wherever you are, uh, and you do this attempt at getting documents remotely by hacking in. And the same documents that you would have your spy steal, uh, you get off the server. Because all documents in government agencies now are on the servers, right? And you don't steal a few documents a day over the course of a year or two, the way spies do. Instead, you take down whole libraries of Congress equivalents in a night. Terabytes of information getting exfiltrated. I know this sounds like science fiction, uh, and it's a little difficult to prove that it's going on, except that the government admits that it's going on, and other governments admit that it's going on. If you are a private corporation, you're a university research facility, uh, you're a government lab, if you have any intellectual property worth having, it's been had. And the most sophisticated of facilities, even with expertise in the area of cybersecurity, have been successfully hacked, and terabytes of information have been extracted. What could cyber war mean? In the first few pages of the book, we talk about an incident where the Israelis blew up a nuclear research facility that was under construction in Syria, it was being built by the Koreans. And the Israelis did it by flying a bunch of F-15s and F-16s into Syria. F-15s and F-16s from the 1970s, big radar cross-section. And the Syrians had spent billions of dollars uh, on air defense. And yet the Syrian air defense system saw nothing, didn't see the F-15s and F-16s from their big radar cross-sections. All they saw was an empty screen because the Israelis had hacked into uh, the Syrian air defense network. And they were showing a green screen, everything fine, everything normal, when in fact things were, you know, if they'd opened the window, they could have heard the planes flying overhead. That same idea can be carried forward into attacks on infrastructure. So you can hack your way into the control system for the electric power grid, and the control room will show everything's fine and normal, and you can cause, nonetheless, systems to malfunction uh, and create blackouts or cause the equipment to damage itself and destroy itself. And that's not entirely theoretical. The United States government has tried to do that in experiments and proven it can do it. Uh, and can do it from the public internet. So there's a case of someone reaching out, if you will, the hand coming out of the computer and destroying something. It's not just ones and zeros fighting each other. It's something like a electric power generator flying apart, or high tension wires melting. Or, I've been saying this in the discussions around the country on the book, uh, or blowing up a big natural gas pipeline. Um, one of those big 30-inch natural gas pipelines, if you get the, into the control system and you shut a valve at one end and you increase the pump rate at another end, you get you know, something like what happened at San Francisco Airport uh, last week. I'm not saying that that's what happened. It probably didn't. But that's the kind of destruction that you can cause. 
you can cause physical destruction of infrastructure from the other side of the world by hacking into the control systems. And that's true of electric power, it's true of natural gas, it's true of uh, aircraft in terms of air, air traffic control, it's ter true in terms of railroads, in terms of switching systems and derailments. Uh, and all of our infrastructure like that, railroads, aviation, power, uh, are vulnerable to these kinds of attacks because they're all run by computer networks. And none of them have been architected to be secure. 